This man is so versatile, he's the only actor in history to complete the trifecta of playing Joe Biden, Bob Crane, and Dick Vermeil. And now he is playing the uh, lawyer, Brian Banks, Justin Brooks, in the film Brian Banks. He's Greg Kinnear. How are you, Greg? Very good, Rich. That, that's quite the trifecta. That's the triple Lindy right there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd feel better about it if I wasn't coming off a... Horrible putting oh, exhibition just please, moments ago on live no, television. No, you just played the Eisen game that uh, all of us have lost to, for some reason, Josh <laughs> Norman of the Washington Redskins. But you're, Listen, you're, I played in the AT&T. I played them all. When know. you get to the Rich Eisen <laughs> challenge, it's a whole different level, folks. It's nerve-wracking here. People are weirdly quiet when you're putting. That's true. Well, we didn't want to, you know, we've never been around you putting before. We didn't know if you needed full quiet. I'm or, used to guys yelling at me and harassing that, <laughs> me. It was way too quiet in here. <laughs> well, you're, hopefully you're not going to go in the tank in this interview right now. After yeah, that, well, we'll hope we'll hope not. Okay. But listen, I can always I start off with a little swag. Uh, I've yes. got uh, I've got uh, I play Justin Brooks in an upcoming movie called Brian Banks. Yes, those are exonerate T-shirts. Pass them out. I love it. Yeah, it's a California license plate X O N R H. So it's exonerate. You got it. You I got love it. it. I Great love organization, it. the Amazing. California Innocence Project. They've uh, they've overturned uh, 30 wrongful convictions in the state of California. Over 30, actually. And uh, you do incredible work. Well, so. as, I, as I told you uh, before you came out, you know, we've known Brian Banks for a very long time. And this have. is a crucially important story. How did you get involved with the, with the project here, Greg? Yeah, you know, I, I listen, I, I'm not sure. You know, Brian's story was out there. It was a national story, obviously. Right. But, you know, it wasn't something that I ever really knew that much about. So it was really through the, the script, which uh, sort of, you know, obviously blew me away. It was so powerful. And, and then I heard Tom Shadiak was directing it, who did, you know, all sorts of, he's like $2 billion of giant Hollywood comedies. Right. And I was like, this script is not very funny. Right. Uh, but he, uh, you know, he had gone through this, like, transformation himself, wanted to do a, a, a meaningful story. He's a great storyteller. And he sat down and we talked about the, you know, the story. He kind of walked me through what had happened with Brian, how the Justin Brooks, who I play, involved with the California Innocence Project, had come together. Um, and and I was just so taken with the the whole story of of this wrongful conviction of the 16 year old kid thrown into prison system. They, you know, he got a he got a plea bargain that put him in jail for six years. He missed. Um, an incredible football career, I think. No doubt. And, um, you know, it was a little bit off the grid because, as I say, I play a guy who, who ran this organization where they would take people who are in prison and get them out. And in the case of, of Brian's story at this point, he was out of prison. He had served his six years, and he sort of made the plea that he needed – you know, he wanted to obviously get this uh, this parole revoked and kind of get the case overturned so that he could get the ankle bracelet clipped off, be able to be able to go and play football and pursue his dream. So um, I, I was just taken with the whole story, obviously. So um, what was it like playing? Uh, I assume you spoke with Justin, right? Did you connect yeah, with him at all? Yeah, of okay. course. I started down at the uh, ET. In addition to running this thing and starting this thing, he, he's also actually just a professor at the you know uh, University of uh, Western uh, School of Law down in San Diego, and he was nice enough to let me go hang out in his law class. Right. I was the stupidest guy in the classroom <laughs> for a few days, just kind of watching him do his thing and and just hanging out with him. And, and I know you had Aldis here, who, yep. who became very good friends with Brian, and you know both these guys were there on the set a lot, mm -hmm. and. Um, and it was just a great resource, you know. You know, you're uh, that's something you don't normally get as an actor. You're able to just look to the guy and say, "How did this happen?" Right. And I think the movie succeeds in a sense that when you watch it, I think the audience they know. The audiences know when a movie's working because they're saying, "This is how it happened." Whether it's a fictitious story or nonfiction story, they sense when something is real, when it's not. And I think, I think. We really got the bones of the story right. Oh, you know, I mean, there's no question about it. Almost to a, a point where I'm watching it, and I was genuinely concerned because this is such an important story that uh, Greg Kinnear here on the Rich Eisen Show talking about Brian Banks and the, the Brian Banks movie here, is that I was genuinely concerned that people would think that some of this stuff was made up because it's so right. outrageous right. that this happened to Brian and then the big break being him looking down at his Facebook page and the, the girl who accused him falsely of rape just said basically, hey, what's up? How you been? Right. Just out of the blue. 
It's 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 you, un, it's not to be believed. You couldn't write it, right? You know. In fact, when I read the the script originally, I literally thought, well, even if this wasn't true, even if this wasn't populated with real people and facts, right? This would be a hell of a movie uh, <laughs> right. if you could believe it, right? I know. So, right. in, in truth, it, it, the truth is, it actually needs the truth to back it up because you're right. It's it's uh, it's it's a crazy story. Greg Kinnear here on the Rich Eisen Show. Brian Banks again in theaters near you. You got to check it out. Not your first rodeo of playing uh, in a football movie, uh, a human being that it's actually true. exists. True. Did you get to hang out with Dick Vermeil before making Invincible? Did I you? did. I did. I was with him in his last. Uh, his last training camp, actually, they were in Wisconsin training for, you know, Kansas City in 2000 and I think five uh -huh. was his last year there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, went up there. Tony Gonzalez was there. Who yeah. I, Funny enough, I had met when I made this movie called The Matador down in Mexico City with Pierce Brosnan. And I met Tony down in Mexico one time. Was he in the movie or just No, he just wasn't in the movie. He was in, uh, I literally met him out at uh, some club one time with <laughs> Pierce and I were out and he's a super cool guy. And, uh, um, but he was the only one I, I didn't really know anybody there. So it right. was, uh, they were, it was intimidating to go in there. I mean, it's, it's for meal, you know? And yeah. I, uh, uh, hung out with the guys, watched the, uh, watch tape with them for a couple of days. It, it was really cool. Of course, the, the horror eventually came full circle when uh, Dick goes out one day to kind of give the guys the end of the day kind of wrap up. And he says a few words and he says, listen, guys, we're going to take this to the ends of thing, the thing, you know, just like an unbelievable sort of movie locker room speech that. You know, it's just coming off the cuff, right? Sure. This is what he does. It's not his first rodeo. It's emotional. It's great. And then he says, and by the way, Greg Kinnear is going to play me in a movie, upcoming movie. Greg, why don't you say a few words to the boys? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, he didn't. Uh, <laughs> Come on. You guys play hard? <laughs> uh, I, I, I was just like frozen Come in on. time. Yeah, no, no. He had me uh, He had me say a few words, and I... Uh, I, I don't remember what came out, some sort of uh, half-witted <laughs> speech to say, go get them, fellas. But, uh, but he was, uh, but he was, it was a great guy to play. And, you know, as a character, you know, obviously, if you study Dick, you know, that emotional side of him. Oh, please. A lot of people are cynical about that. A lot of people are like, uh, you know, oh, come on, where's this come from? I'm telling my dad is very emotional. My father, like that. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw that in in uh, in Dick, and felt like you know that that's just a real thing, man. Well, I, it's in his heart. He is. I mean, he's as genuine as they come. He. I just saw him this weekend. He was right, at the Hall the, of Fame for Tony. And I saw. I saw. Actually, I happened to watch Tony's uh, Tony's speech, and I thought uh, I thought it was a great speech, by the way. And a nice shout out to Dick and to kind of everybody. Well, we're we're you know I've known him Dick Vermeil forever, and. Uh, we've seen the emotional side of, of him in many different ways, not just on the football field. He was part of the NFL Network's Combine coverage for yeah. a few years in yeah. Indianapolis. And the Combine, for whatever reason, every year coincides with the Academy Awards. Yeah. And then when Scorsese won for The Departed, it was the first time he won the award yep. for The Departed. Vermeule, we look over at him watching, he started crying. Yeah. <laughs> for Martin yeah. Scorsese. And we're yeah. like, do you know him? And he goes, no, it's just... Just yeah. kind of got me right. We yeah. started tearing up, and we're yeah. all, and all of us. The NFL Network was like, "That's a so cool," and then B like, "That is so cool." We just watched for a meal, like tear up for yeah. real. <laughs> I'd like to think he's a little choked up right now. He might be at home, sitting uh, at home watching, watching us the living for, room, a nice cup of coffee <laughs> or and wine. Think. It's his red wine, right? He's sitting there, <laughs> and the, our our fantasy team name last year that we won our football fantasy football was Touch of the Vermeil. Because whenever we get choked up, we call it having a touch of the Vermeil right. here on the Rich Eisen show. Right. So you nailed it. That was fun. That was a fun movie for you to be a part of. It uh, was. It was. Invincible. We, you know, we were also shot uh, the end in, uh, we went to Dallas at Dallas Stadium before they blew it up. Oh, the old Texas Stadium. That was the last, it was like the last, certainly the last movie to shoot at Texas Stadium. I mean, literally the thing came down a couple weeks later. No kidding. Yeah. And it was... Uh, and, and I was on the other side, and of course they, I don't know who the actor was, that they had some guy, you know, Landry comes in with the Dallas Cowboys, it's that big game at the end, and I'm looking over across the field, we got the cameras rolling, but the sense that you had in there was, I mean, I, I couldn't pay for that, it was great. That's right, yeah. I, 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 I remember being in that stadium a couple times too. Yeah, it's like and, and Wahlberg took a few hits in that movie, I will say. What Mark do you mean? You know, he was he was out there with uh, Mark was uh, you know playing Vince Papali in the movie, sure, and yeah. uh, 
you know, I, there was I, no double. I, I, there was I think, no double. Hey, there was a double. Yes, there was a double. But I'm just going to give a shout out there to Mark. <laughs> okay. I, I saw him take a few good hits. <laughs> he was in the concussion protocol for uh, for the morning <laughs> shoot one day or something like that. Yeah, never made sense since that movie. I, <laughs> I can't understand the guy. Greg Kinnear here on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, <laughs> golf is that? Would that say that's your sport, or do you do any what else? Yeah, I would say that's my probably my my sport. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to mm. do? Do you say? Do I want to explain? No, no, no. Do you want to do? You say what? You, what, what like like what's your what's your handicap? I mean, I, you... I'm a uh, uh, with that putting. This you'll oh, appreciate my game right now. With that putting stroke, I'm a 5.5 index. Whoa, yeah, yeah. So that's but that's, that's awesome. just come down. I know it's, it's not. I swear it's just. Uh, there's been a couple of rounds that okay. have kind of dropped me down. But uh, um, I used to be like more. Uh, I used to be like a, uh, a a comfortable seven or eight index, but I have dropped a little okay. bit. Okay, best athlete that you've ever been paired up with on a golf course? The, who's uh, the best at the at the sport? The best one, or coach, or anything like that? Oh, I played with Tony Romo. Uh, you know, that's the real deal. Uh, he, right? he knows his way around a golf course. Obviously, <laughs> he's scratch, right? I mean, that is Yo, literally what he is. I for think sure. he's plus. I think he's plus. I could not and, imagine uh, waking up one day, going to play golf, and say, you know what? I'm going to give strokes back to this course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to give him back. No, I think you have to. Is the, It's the, <sighs> kind of the rules. Yeah. Um, but he, he, he is. Choice. I think he's a plus <laughs> one or something, so he has to do <laughs> it. I don't think he, yeah, I don't think he's opting for that. No, I know. I just, um, just I couldn't imagine that mindset. I play with, uh, I play once in a while. I know you know Doc Rivers. Yes. So I play with him once in a while. So uh, he's, uh, he's. Doc is uh, really competitive, uh, particularly with me for some reason. What's up with that? Like, well, I don't know. I feel like we, whenever we're, I'm playing with him, he's uh, he, he's he's always brings his best possible game when huh. he is my opponent and uh, manages to take money from me. So you bring it you bring it out of him, huh? Well, he must I be... bring out money. Oh, oh I, yes, <laughs> and apparently I bring out good golf. From him. A, I don't know if you played since uh, the news broke, but I mean he must be in better mood with uh, with Kawhi Leonard and and Paul yeah. George in yeah. his mix right now. I, I mean that's... he's got to be a happier camper. Yeah. Yeah, one I, would think. That sounds that was a pretty good situation. Oh my man. gosh, that was uh, a shocker here yeah. in Los yeah. Angeles for sure. Um, so a few more minutes left here with with Greg Kinnear. Um, my guy over there, Chris Brockman, is uh, Chris. He is a he's. What's up, Greg? Well, I like to. You're, you're a mass hole. You're oh, from you're thanks. from that area, and you're a very <laughs> hard bitten guy. But uh, Chris has a little bit of an Achilles heel. Um, your your favorite movie, the one that makes you weepy. Favorite. The one that one of them that makes you think of, you know, your mom is what what is that? Which that uh, you've got mail and you are the first one in the history of this show. We've been here five years to actually be in that film. Do you, wow. Do you hear that a lot? I noticed about? he was a little choked up when uh, when I came in. <laughs> touch here. of the Vermeil. He's yeah. got a touch yeah. of the Vermeil. Yeah. Um, Do you get that a lot? Yeah, I mean, people know uh, you. Yeah, you've got mail. Strangely, has uh, this unbelievable staying power, doesn't it? It's a it's a lovely film and. Uh, uh, I did it right after As Good As It Gets and, and uh, got to work with uh, Nora Ephron, who the lovely, wonderful Nora Ephron, and which was a gift to get to work with her. Sure. We were in New York in fall. And there's, I don't know, it's one of those movies that just captured it was a, it's like a postcard of New York at a beautiful time. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, it's still, you know, people are quite touched by it. Do you have any questions for him, Chris? Do you got, I mean, is there anything? I mean, this is your, well, this is your movie. Well, you just kind of threw this uh, on me. I wasn't expecting this. Oh my it's, God. It's, extremely, it's extremely rewatchable, which is, I think it's it's great quality. And it's kind of before this swipe right age. Not know? really a question, but yeah. Not really a question. <laughs> just kind of making a general statement in your direction. And then hoping it's one of those things that's my talk about. You know right, what I mean? Right, No, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you so go. You, yeah. See, that's our that's one of our. Um, oh, look at that. Question. There he is, right there, yeah. hugging it out with Meg Ryan. She's really snuggling up to you Jeez. there, man. <laughs> well, Chris has mail. I mean, what else? What else would you <laughs> we, want? We really bond. Uh, I've got a couple other items from your uh, your filmography. We have something called Celebrity True or False. If you wouldn't mind uh, sure. letting us know if some of these things are true or false. <laughs> Roll the drop, please. Celebrity True or False. You can't handle the truth. Okay, um, so the movie uh, title, True or False, As Good As It Gets, was originally called Old Friends. Is that a true story? Is that a true story? That is true. That is celebrity Rich. true? That is celebrity that is true or false? It was, uh, it was called Old Friends. In fact, I passed out, uh, um, I passed out on that as gifts, uh, little um, uh, frames yes. of my dog, Ver uh, uh, Verdell, six little Verdells, darling little dogs. Yes. 
uh, when they're not crapping in your trailer. Right. And it said old friends on it. So that's a collector's <laughs> item right there before we switch the name. I think we've got it. a photograph up yeah, there, there right go. there. Okay. Um, next one. When Sidney Pollack called you to cast you in Sabrina, you thought it was a prank call. Is that a true story? Kind of not. I, I, I think that's kind of been slightly. Okay, uh, so that is now you know, celebrity false. That but, is celebrity false. But that is, that must have been. I mean, I didn't think it was a prank call. It wasn't like, oh, you know, you're not Sidney Pollock. Stop it. I mean, I, I did get a call from my agent saying, uh, you know, Sidney wanted to uh, to meet with me. And uh, and I was deeply surprised, uh, but I, I, I didn't think uh, See, my told, agent was messing with an me. An old time great, Sidney Pollock. I mean, One of the greats, I mean, absolutely. I mean, oh pretty gosh. much every movie, even him acting in every single, he's amazing. Every performance he is in is spot on. Uh, my favorite being Tootsie, where he oh, plays yeah. Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yes. You're a tomato, the agent. Well, uh, he's also, also in Michael Clayton, which I think might have been his oh, last yeah. acting That's role, right. he was amazing. Amazing, yeah. In no. that. He was, and, and a great guy for me to start off with because that was the first movie I did. And to have a guy there that, of course, I admired him as a director, but to have somebody there who was as good an actor as he was was super cool. Um, spent seven years living in Greece as a teenager. Is that a true story? Uh, yeah, that's that's true. That is true. Are I went to high school. I graduated high school there. My dad was with the American Embassy when I was a kid. Uh, we were actually in Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, and the no war got evacuated from, uh, from Beirut to... Uh, Athens, Greece, and my dad got reassigned to the embassy there and was there for actually six years, not seven. No kidding. Yeah. So are you fluent in Greek? Are you? Uh, can you? Was that, what, what did you just say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you. No, I, I, I said I speak a little Greek, but, uh, okay. you know, I, we, I, my wife and I took our kids over there a few years ago, and uh, I, I, I definitely got yelled at by a few people when I was in, you know, trying to overextend my command of the language but i could get around well you know if it, it doesn't ma if it has nothing to do with uh, Giannis these days as sport at uh, Kumpo, we we have no idea as a sports what about whether you were talking greek or not unless we don't hear that name can you i don't know what you're talking about you don't right even now. know right now what i'm talking well, about what, what do you mean Giannis, the the, uh, the nba player oh okay yeah yeah, yeah sure well yeah I mean, Giannis, uh, that's john as you know john. <laughs> Giannis is john just so you know <laughs> Actually, I did not know that. Yeah, Yannis. Yeah. Sort of ghost is George. Yannis is John. So he's John Atenacumpo? That's is right. That That's right. I had no idea. So if we, I, I don't if, think you're telling the truth. I swear I am. Yeah, for sure, Yannis. Absolutely. So should I just call he's him really Johnny sick. A from now on? From now on, yeah, you can. Johnny A, my guy from the Bucks, Johnny A. I'm like a Wikipedia page for you. You man. are right now. I mean, how have you guys survived on the show all these years without me? Yeah, well, I just got to, we got to get you on more. Um, thank you for coming on, Thanks by the way. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the, no, normally I, I give uh, uh, nice parting gifts. As a matter of fact, can you hand that top box over to me, Eric, uh, right there? These are uh, a nice little giveaway for you. Okay. Uh, I'll take the Callaways too. There you actually, go. That's what you're going to get. Oh, there you go. I'm at the clubs. There you go. There you go. I, this is, these are nice. The, Thank you. These are Callaway Chrome Soft with wow, the show and they logo got, on you there. Got them all, uh, you got, got, got them all logoed up. Where does the logo come from? Oh, you're right, because that's a cool logo. Uh, I run the 40-yard dash every year in my suit and tie at the NFL Scouting Combine, and that is and me. And what's your speed every year? Uh, well, it really depends. Um, uh, does somebody clock you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Last year, it was six flat. And your best number? Five nine four. Will you ever beat it again? I try. I'm like a fine wine. I hope. Are you on? But are you in? Are you in uh, work in, shoes? Or are you in? Are you in to, t uh, tennis shoes? I used to be in work shoes until I damn near ripped my hamstring off the bone. That's the thing. So now I'm in running shoes. Yeah. Um, and here we go. This is a, a shot of me right oh, here. This oh. is me from this year, as a matter of fact. Wow. Getting down and uh, and if you will, uh, up, putting it up and down the line. Oh, that's great. That's great. I appreciate you using the word and great. And look at that. You got to lift those knees. You got to little Tom Cruise it a little bit more and lift those <laughs> knees up. You got to get those knees up, dude. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, I'm not saying it's not without its uh, room for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, it's though. Six, six flat is not impressive. Bad, not bad in a suit and tie. So, yeah, we decided to make the show logo of it. And uh, my right leg on the show logo is, in fact, Photoshopped to be a little bit more um, uh, less awkward. Right. I moved right. it in underneath my body. But otherwise, the rest of it is damn accurate straight. So you That's literally it. went in and said, guys, let's raise that up a little it bit. It was suggested, and I didn't, uh, I didn't object. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. I, I did not I argue. understand. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.